Yes, it has cannibals, and so much more. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the nation of Estwild. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links. I am referencing the Tales of the Lance box set and War of the Lance source book for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. As the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen is set in Calaman with wings of the Red Dragon Army assaulting Salamnia from Estwild, I thought it would be a perfect time to talk about the nation of Estwild. One might expect it to be full of single-minded monstrosities that the Dark Queen conscripted into combat, but the reality is far from it. Yes, there are those who were brought in under force or free will, there are also those who stand fiercely independent as they have since before the Cataclysm. Let's take a look at the region, climate, and cultures of Estwild. Estwild rests between the Dergard Mountains and the northeastern Calchist Mountains. Though its terrain is diverse, it's mainly composed of dry grasslands, rugged foothills, pine forests, and high mountains. Due to its inhospitable nature, only the more rugged animals can subsist here. It's broadly broken up into three primary areas. Qualmish, the North Shore, Ketar, the Midlands, and Quermish, the South Shore. This is not to say these regions are isolated unto themselves. In fact, barbaric humans make up the majority of the population of over 27,000, and there's a healthy representation of goblinoids, ogres, dwarves, giants, and centaurs that live in disparate tribes as well. Languages vary from common, estwild, goblin, and ogre. Not unlike Naraka and Kern, Estwild experiences severe weather for most of the year. In the summer, from the months of Bran to Hittimont, the northern Karain Ocean pours hot and steamy air into the broad plain, with very little rain to ease the land. The high humidity is uncharacteristically unhelpful to the grasses. On the off chance a large sporadic rain does come, it only momentarily greens up the land. From the months of Phoenix to Ranmont, Winter strikes hard. Severe storms and rain blast the wasteland. The torrential blizzards are generous with its thunder and lightning. Trade is almost non-existent in Estwild, save for the bitter powder produced called cocoa. Everything else they generate is considered substandard in contrast to its neighboring nations. The Qualmish, or North Shore, holds the Astavar Mountains and the Woods of Lahue, with wiry trees and dense forests. It borders the Turbidus Ocean and Nordmar. There are rumors of the formation of a goblin empire in addition to the Lahutians, the pink-skinned, blonde-furred human cannibal tribes. It's home to other primal creatures as well. Ahom is one of the only civilized and xenophobic settlements in Qualmish. It was once like Calaman is today, an important port town where merchants could ship their goods from. Since the Cataclysm, mountains were raised nearby, drawing the town away from the shore while simultaneously flooding the area, creating massive swamps. The Astavar Mountains are ogre and giant territory. The ogres have allied with the dragon armies and provide safe passage through their terrain. At times, the populace wars with the goblins of the Woods of Lahue. The Shadowglades are rumored to house a renegade wizard working for Tachesis, trying to create new, foul, draconian-like creatures. It's home to many species not found elsewhere on Kryn. Qatar, or the Midlands, are the foothill marshes nestled between the Dergard Mountains and the Calchists. The mountain barbarians dwell between Qualmish and Qatar, running raids south to Quermish. They are the least organized of the people of Estwild, but the most numerous. They consist of small groups of humans and hobgoblin tribes. Many have been assimilated into the dragon armies. First Wall is the largest city in the Midlands. It was originally created as a walled Salamnic outpost before the Cataclysm. It's currently inhabited by human farmers and civilized goblins, hobgoblins, and half-ogres. Their ruler, Lemal Felwe, has allowed the dragon armies to move troops and goods into her city. 
Quinter Ranch is the most prosperous goat and horse ranch in Estwild. It is fortified by the dragon armies who are drawing its superior horses into their conflict. Darkling Hall is an enormous three-mile passage of smooth redstone walls and black polished stone floor that leads to the heart of the mountain. A sense of sorrow overwhelms those within, and it is rumored to be the location of an ancient portal of the evil gods. The Quermiche, or South Shore, is the area around the New Sea and is arguably the most civilized region of Estwild. Farmers operate collectively in small enclaves and fair-sized towns, though they are distrustful of their neighbors. Scattered throughout all of Estwild are the Lore Tai, tribesmen who live a nomadic hunter-gatherer life. They're the least suspicious of Estwild's population, but the most closed-off culture. They're a superstitious lot who do not interact well with outsiders. They may dwell in an area for a single night or an entire month before moving on. Arl's Watch is a small city near the mouth of New Sea, which leads to sanction. It's key to Estwild's control by the dragon armies. It features a handful of run-down temples to the old gods. Haltagoth is a regional center of South Shore, located in the deepest bay of the region and features the richest soil along the coastline. Dragon armies have taken up key spots throughout the city. Much of the recruitment for the dragon armies from the local barbarian population flows through here. Two Creek is this region's oldest settlement. The residents fight off raids in the winter and has become a primary place of residence for the dragon armies as well. Wheatley is a thriving hill dwarf settlement with a focus on finished metal goods. They're largely ignored by the dragon armies, but are ready to retreat to the safety of nearby caves if necessary. The Singing Mountains are a collection of mountains. They're considered a mystical site where one hears mesmerizing songs that lead travelers to their unfortunate demise. It is a beautiful but terrifying place. And that is all I have to say about the geography and people of Estwild in the War of the Lance era. What do you think of the nation? Have you mixed the barbarian tribes into your campaign? And finally, would you run players into the pink-skinned cannibals? <laughs> Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, be thankful you can feel pity and horror at the death of an enemy. The day we cease to care, even for our enemies, is the day we have lost this battle.